Hi there. I'm in some stubble. Hooray, the fields are starting to be done. This should have happened about a month and a half ago. But for various reasons, mainly non-stop rain in July, meant that the harvest, instead of being super early, was super late. And this could be the shortest video of all time because I've never been on this field before. And, and I don't know what to expect. I've only got one small camera with me. I'm not plugged in yet. I left my tripod down there. This is the first thing I've dug. Now, as a general rule, if you start a day really, 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 really well, um, it sort of goes downhill from there. This is the first <laughs> hole I have dug. My speaker isn't plugged in. Suffice to say, it sounded like a cartridge. <laughs> it's not. It's one of the most incredible things I've found in a long time. It's a it's a Saxon zoomorphic strap end. <laughs> and I can't believe I'm actually saying this. I can't believe I'm talking to the camera telling you that the first thing I've dug on a new field is a Saxon zoomorphic strap end, but it is. Um, it's got that sort of mousy, sort of rabbity, hairy look on the, on the zoomorphic section right at the tip. And, and, and it's in really pretty good condition. Um, I mean, not amazing, amazing. I don't think it retains any of the enamelling it would have had, but it will clean up quite nicely. And um, it's got both sides of its strap end, i.e. the bit where it would have gone round the leather, whatever it was holding. And that's just phenomenal. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just sort of, <laughs> I'm sort of speechless. Um, I don't find an awful lot of Saxon stuff and it's just really exciting when one does especially with the first hole. But as I said, that, that'll probably be it now. Um, and thank you very much for watching and, and see you next time. No, we will go on um, and, and hopefully find, find some more stuff. But my God, I don't think I've had a first hole like that in a very long time. Wow. Cool. thought that was a watch winder. Do you see coming up like that? Then I noticed there's a pin in it. <laughs> um, looks to be very much in that in a groove there. My god, that's, that's about, I've just gone to get the, the ca camera tripod. So it's, um, I don't know what it is. And that's basically the second thing I've dug up. Can you believe it? Um, I just, it just looks really unusual. I've never found anything quite like it with a knot, I think it's called probably a knob there. Maybe it's missing something. Um, very, and it's flat on that side and just sort of rounded on that. I've never seen anything quite like it, but it definitely, it, the, 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 the pin belongs there. I think there's a, an, um, there's an in bit there which it sort of sits in, whatever you call that. My God, absolutely beautiful object. So delicate. I don't know what it dates to. Um, but that's two things. <laughs> that's and then what the other thing. <laughs> I've dug three signals, and the other one is a little bit more of a, a, a strap end of sorts. Or a, or a hook. Um, my God, that's got to some design on it as well. I've been here all of 10 minutes and, and that's what I found already. As I said, it, it, it can't go on like that. One just doesn't have you know, if you start like this, it tends to go like that. Um, but I don't really care. I mean, if I go home like with those, I'll be a fortunate man. 
Hi there and welcome to headquarters. Well that was just a bonkers start to any metal detecting session. This literally was the first signal I dug up in that stubble and I mean as I said on the day it's a terrible sign usually. If you find something really good early on and if you find something really good on your first signal then you can almost certainly just write the rest of the day off. You get so excited, you get so confident, you never find, you never find anything else. But fortunately, we did find other things that day. But let's just start off with this. Now, it is, it's a zoomorphic Saxon, early medieval, um, strap end. Uh, and there's, there's a few that have been found on the portable antiquity scheme, quite often in the north of England, as it, it seems. But this one's a particularly good one. It's got all sorts of interwoven, they call it twee hiddle. Um, style or something like that. You, I'll, I'll, it'll be written down in one of the photographs I'm showing you now. And it ends up with a stylized animal's head. Now, I don't know what it is. It's, is it a fox? Is it a hare? Is it a deer? Is it a mouse? Who knows? I don't know if anyone particularly knows. The, the general description of these things is stylized animal head. But I'm absolutely thrilled. You can see where it would have been in two parts and it would have presumably enclosed around something. There would have prob probably been also a couple of rivet holes to have held it in place. And it's just a particularly nice one. I, I don't know why they, they didn't choose something a bit more fearsome, but maybe they weren't for fearsome strap ends. Maybe they were just for tying up bits and pieces. But I'm um, just really thrilled with that. Now, I have found recently another end to one of these things which is in absolutely fabulous condition it's got um one of its eyes is missing but the other one is some sort of colored stone you can clearly see the snout in the ears and it looks like a mouse or a oh gosh I'm, fun enough it looks like an aardvark or something like that <laughs> don't think it can be or a tapir or something who knows stylized animal is what they tend to go for but look at those absolutely beautiful bits of early early medieval um, artifact and they date they reckon they date from sort of 8th to 10th century so sort of 700 800 900 AD just absolutely just wonderful things to find I mean absolutely over the moon about them. and then this <laughs> I think we found that little tiny clasp second signal the third signal was this I mean this is just bonkers I mean the 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 delicacy of this how this has not um, been broken by 800 years of ploughing because this dates to 1200, 1300. Um, God only knows. I've never seen one of these before. I put it on the detectinghub.co.uk information below. They're brilliant for all sorts of things like this. And Kath, who is one of the leaders of the hub, immediately got back and said, here you go, here's, here's something similar. And she pointed me to one on the Portable Antiquity Scheme, which is extremely similar. A small medieval copper alloy annular brooch. La-di-da, la-di-da, missing the pin. Ours isn't missing the pin. Um, and, and they reckon it dates from 1200 to 1400. Now, I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but they reckon that the end of these is a very sort of naive depiction or symbol of, of clasped hands. And I have read somewhere, here we go, similar brooch forms in gold show that the projection is intended to represent praying hands. Well, who knows? But it is absolutely, I mean, my God, I don't, I don't dare even look at it for breaking. But you can also see, on, as I pointed out at the time, the, um, there's a sort of knob on this side with a bit of white paste. Presumably that would have held um, a, a stone or a jewel of sorts. And it's just the most incredible piece of history. I think I've, one of the most incredible pieces of history I've ever found. Just so delicate. I mean, it's, that's exactly what it was meant to look like. It hasn't changed in, since it was dropped. And it's survived all that time. I mean, it's just gobsmacking, isn't it? Anyway, thank you very much for listening to that. And let's go back to the fields because we find quite a few other bits and pieces. Now this gave an almighty, an almighty thing. And I think it looks just like a piece of lead, a lead disc. I thought, my God, have we found, is this a joke? Is this a Saxon disc brooch? <laughs> a lead one? Well, it's not, no. It's a, I think it's a farm token, but I've never seen one like this. Um, whether it's just very, very early or not, I don't know. It's got a sort of sun, sunburst petal mark on it with notches round the side. 
Um, but but I've never seen one quite like that. Look, because the design looks like it's scratched in. It's not raised. It looks really, really crude. Um, I've not seen anything like that. I'm not a fan of farm token as wonky and as crude as that. So who knows? Wow, what a bloody morning already. Well, it's not easy, this stubble. It's not as bad as what I was on the other day. It's only, I don't know, three or four inches. So, but you, you, you've just got to imagine all the stuff you're missing. I hope you can hear me. It's got very windy suddenly. But um, I don't know what they're going to do with this field, but my God, it's, I reckon it's going to be amazing once, once um, once they've um they've dealt with this stubble <laughs> well that's quite coppery sanding but those copper strap ends were, were, were sand like this and i've got a couple of really cool things to show you anyway um not saxon a bit later but still It's funny when you're detecting stubble with the dais, you can, you can really make irony sands sound quite good because you can't get through them so easily. But that's probably just a cartridge. But again, that's what I thought with the strap in, so. Whatever it is, it's in here. Yeah, just a bit of lead, a big bit of lead. I'm finding a lot of lead today, which is, you know, not a bad sign. This is definitely early, you can just tell. But anyway, let's have a look at the other bits and pieces. This rang up a very, very nicely. It's a George the Fourth, I think. You're going to pick up that all day in the stubble. It's a George the Fourth farthing, or is it William the Fourth? One of the two. Um, yeah, George the Fourth. He's facing. He's facing left. First coins to feature. I think I'm right in saying George the Fourth coins. Um, Britannia facing that way. Up until now, she faces that way. So this is 1821. I think I'm right in saying. I'm sure I am. So that's rather nice. And two other coiny type things. A tiny little rose farthing. I mean, these are brilliant to find. So if you're finding these in the stubble, you know, you, you've got a really good chance. But, um, but it was on the surface, to be fair. But that's nice. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. And something also a little bit different. A Jetton. <laughs> a sort of late... German Jetton, so probably 17th century or 16th century. So a good array of finds. Now, I don't know when the camera switched it off. The boring alarm goes off after about five minutes of me rabbiting on. Um, now that's a German one. I think it's probably Schultz or Krauwinkel, Rosenorb type. Rather thin, but again, in quite nice condition. Very pleasing. So my God, so we've got Saxon onwards. Saxon up to George the Fourth. In the stubble. Well, what a field this is turning out to be. This really did, this really did ring up. And look at that, isn't that lovely? Lovely, I think probably 15th century, 16th century, sort of spectacly type buckle. That's a nice one. Gosh. George the Fourth, Rose Farthings, Jetton, Saxon. And that. Gosh. Well, that might be worth a dig. Bit cartridgey, but we'll see. We're in a good bit of the field here, I think. Um, I've suddenly realised why th this is trying so hard today and giving me such a nice time. 
especially early on. I, I hate to say it, I hope, you, I hope you don't think I've jumped ship, but I've decided to go for a Deus too. I think two years after it came out, it's probably about time. I just worry, having had this for so long now, even though it's a bloody brilliant machine, that, that I may be missing stuff not having the Deus II. So I've got one coming. It should have arrived yesterday. And maybe, maybe, th maybe this one knew that. It's a bit like having your hair cut, isn't it? You, you decide, right, time for a haircut. And the morning of the haircut, you wake up, you look at yourself in the mirror and you go, do you know what? Actually looks all right. I don't think I need one. Well, I'm uh, sort of feeling a bit like that with this. Anyway, I'm picking it up tonight um, because bloody DPD can't be bothered to drop it off to my door. They're so, they so they never can. They say we can't find you. We can't find you. Everyone else can. And so it's left, been left in a depot. So the next time you see me, I may be using a different machine. Um, in the light version, I'm not getting the remote, so I'll still be just using my, my ears. But maybe... Right, it's in there. I bet it's another piece of lead. I'm finding a lot of lead today. It is, it's another piece of lead. They're all... It's interesting stuff though, because... I mean, it just feels really early lead. It's all really manky. Just, well, that's what it is. I think we'll stop live digging for the time being. Just back, get on and find stuff. Because it's definitely here and it's going to be amazing when this stubble's gone. But anyway, this might be, of course I'm going to keep using this under certain conditions, I'm sure I will. But I think the day is too, might suit me better on the pasture that we go on. Anyway, I do love this machine. I hope I get on with a new one. the wonderful broochy thing was one. I think we have found one. I'm not crazy about these. But um that that's sort of nice isn't it though? Don't know what the design is. Flowers or something? A floral watch winder perhaps. Well you know your dais is working well in the stubble five or six, four or five inches off the ground when it's picking up these. <sighs> it's another little rose farthing. These are the tiniest copper coins. They were made in the reign of Charles II. I can't remember why they came about necessarily, but you had rose farthings, royal farthings, maltravers farthings, and they went on into the reign reign of Charles the first I'm sorry and they went on into the reign of James as well um, and they are the tiniest little copper coins but they're great fun to find and just you know if your machine's picking these up in stubble then you know there's no harm in doing it that's a really lovely one that's in quite good condition they really don't survive well these coins so I'm pleased with that gosh worth coming out today you, it's been a loyal servant for seven or eight years, this machine. I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous about the new one. <laughs> Watch this space. Any advice or tips, please feel free. I'm very good at taking advice, generally. So just do let me know. Well, listen to this. That's a proper sound. I don't find many of these, look. It's a George II. It's a George II farthing. I think that Chani on that side, do you see? With her spear or trident or whatever. And the date there, look at that. That's a lovely date, 1754. And there's George II. 
facing has to be George because he's facing that way. George the first and George the third face that way. And George the fourth, who we found earlier, and didn't find many of his either, faces that way too, obviously. There we go, George the second. Isn't that a lovely coin? I really don't find many of these, so that's a real treat. Well, bloody hell, will you listen to that? That was loud and I mean it could be quite exciting because I think that is a that is possibly a Bronze Age blade of sorts um I just haven't found enough of this sort of stuff to be to to to, to be sure but it just looks like that it's got that cross section um which is very sort of bladey and it narrows down slightly that side it's a bit bronze or copper alloy so that could be really proper early that um i just don't think i just don't know what else it could be and then they didn't make blades out of bronze and copper after a certain amount after a certain time did they so if that is that'd be just wonderful what a what what a what a morning um but i'm gonna i'm gonna call it a day quite soon because this, this stubble's really tiring welcome back last time um no i got so excited about this because it couldn't really be anything else you can see by the cross section that it's definitely um a section of blade the way it goes like that you did one edge there and the, another edge there um and presumably it would have been something from something an awful lot longer and um, they don't survive particularly well I mean lots of these sort of segments do get found but I think I'm probably right in saying that it's got to be Bronze Age and they reckon they date from between sort of 1000 and 2000 BC because come the Iron Age you weren't making blades in bronze anymore you were presumably making them in iron and these therefore these couldn't be any later than than what than what they reckon sort of middle Bronze Age but I mean it's just fabulous imagine I mean that's it's just oh, so old um, and would have formed a sort of, you know, a blade of a sword or a rapier of something like that. Um, I mean, I'm absolutely, I just love, I don't find an awful lot. I mean, if you watch my videos, I find the odd sort of bit of axe here and there. Um, I don't think I find an awful lot more sort of, uh, uh, sort of Bronze Age stuff. And of course, we do find that occasionally, luckily, um, bits of sort of, stone age stuff but um something like that is just it's just rather magical um and god knows you know just to, just to think that that was made so long ago anyway i'm absolutely thrilled with that it was just the most incredible day of finds from sort of from from sort of <laughs> two possibly 2000 bc onwards anyway thank you very much for listening to that and let's go back to the fields the next time you see me i should probably be with my new machine um and, and that'll be interesting. Anyway, thanks very much. And let's go back to the fields. Well, we'll end on this one, which is quite ballsy. And it's been bloody hard work, this stubble. Really gets your, really gets your arm and wrist after a while. And I'm sure this won't be the last time we see this, this old girl. Um, I think I'm going to be. I think I'm going to find it very hard to to completely leave her. We'll just we'll see what happens. Anyway, let's. <sighs> but as I said, it's been a bloody fun day. <clears throat> I think this is too ballsy sounding to be any good. I can see it. I think it's a socking great button or a piece of, um, yeah, it's a bloody great button. It's a, but it's rather lovely. It's a dandy one. It's got the most beautiful design on it. Um, all sorts of things going on, real crosses and stars. Um, and that would have been a really, that would have been a fancy thing at one point. Um, yeah, I like that. It's a nice thing to end on. Big Georgian dandy button. Anyway, 
thank you very much for watching and see you next time with my new machine hopefully